Hello everybody, welcome back to the Girl Space Program video. In today's video, we are going to be going over the heaviest payloads ever launched into an orbit. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be recreating the, the biggest the biggest payloads and the launches and all that stuff. And we're starting off with the KH-11, uh, which was 19.6 tons and launched on the Titan IV. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be going over the, the top 10 biggest and there goes the boosters. Uh, starting out, yeah, like I said, the KH-11, which uh, you may recognize as very similar to Hubble, because it basically is Hubble. Um, these were of a military satellite, and then they retrofitted one of them to make be Hubble. So, yeah, that's the KH-11. 19.6 tons coming in in the 10th place, launched on the Titan IV, which is uh, a really cool rocket. It has a kind of unique bottom stage situation where it lights those SRBs, and then it'll separate the SRBs, and then light up its core stage. It's pretty cool. And then you can see our payload has been deployed, or our fairing has been deployed. Now you can see our payload exposed there uh, as we are burning the second stage, or I guess the third stage, technically, uh, on our way up to uh, up to, up to orbit. This thing was a pretty cool uh, satellite, uh, 19.6 tons, which actually I didn't even realize the, uh, the Titan IV could do that much payload, but it, it could. Uh, it actually launched quite a few of these, and then I believe the Delta IV Heavy took over the last one or two, but those were a different variant, which were slightly uh, different in weight, I believe. I think, don't quote me, big brain. Um, these things did go into a sun-synchronous orbit, so that's what I'm going to be doing. And if you don't know, sun-synchronous orbit is a very slightly retrograde. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be replicating that. I'm going to do our orbital insertion burn, right to boat, no, and then we will separate the payload, and then we'll be ready to almost uh, move on already to the, the number nine place. So there it goes. And there is our little payload here, and it just pop open the solar panels, and we can marvel at my beautiful 10-part recreation of this thing. Um, I really couldn't figure out what to do for like the little the, the, the camera thing. I just docking part, not, not even that good. But uh, either way, on to the ninth place. Launched on the Ariane 5 is the George Lamatri. Lamat, Lemon, Lamatri? Lam, Lamat, Lamatri. One of those things, the ATV, uh, which stands for Automated Transport Vehicle, Autonomous Transport Vehicle. But the point, it's the uh, European Union, or the ESA, ISS resupply vehicle, and it launched on an Ariane 5, and uh, Ariane 5 is a, it's the ESA rocket, it's a pretty standard rocket, it has the core stage, SRBs, and then an upper stage, so yeah, uh, this thing did go to resupply the ISS, and that is going to be, of course, what we're doing with it, as a fairing kind of awkwardly peel away there, because it didn't turn the, 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 the ploy string high enough. Um, this thing weighed uh, 2,293 kilograms, or just around 20 tons. So just about uh, 700 kilograms heavier than the 10th place. Uh, the 9th place is, yeah, the George Luminati ATV, that's what I'm going to call it. Um, ESA launched quite a few eight ATVs, as they call uh, as a resupply vehicle. Um, they're quite, a, yeah, they're all different uh, in, in weight, but the George Luminati one was the was the heaviest. So that's pretty dope. You know what else is pretty dope? Transitions. Um, yeah, it's, it's plug time, guys. I don't know if it's going to try to do something clever, but hey, welcome to plug time, everybody. You should hit the subscribe button. You should hit the notification bell. You should uh, join our very epic Discord or maybe uh, become a channel member. That's pretty awesome. Or comment or uh, buy mer pilot merch, right? Merch, uh, pilotshop.com. Uh-huh. Merch. Yes. Maybe. I don't know. That's up to you, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, though, everyone who has a, who has subscribed and all that stuff. Got 11,000 subscribers and stuff. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Plugs are over. Let's get docked with the ISS, which is, like, rotated briefly for some reason. But uh, here you go. I don't think this is the docking part I'd actually dock to. And now we're going to ignore the part where I put the wrong size docking part on. Um, and we're going to move on to the next place, which is the Saturn 1B, launching the Apollo Command and Service Module. Yeah, Apollo uh, one or the Saturn one B. It's a big rocket. Um, it's it's it, this thing is heavy. This payload is heavier than any payload the Falcon has ever has ever lofted. It weighs um, twenty thousand eight hundred and forty seven kilograms. So this thing weighs just about six hundred kilograms more than the ESA thing, and it is uh, going to be. Uh, going to be on its way. The Saturn 1B was uh, just a different version. It was uh, like a like the predecessor to the Saturn 5, but also something completely different. It had a completely different bottom stage, as you saw with all those weird fuel tanks. Then it has an upper stage, uh, which is the S4B, which is Saturn 5's third stage, um, but it's the same exact Apollo Command and Service module. And this thing was used for plenty of things, like uh, testing the Apollo hardware, as well as the Apollo Soyuz thing where like they docked an Apollo to a Soyuz and everyone was like yay unity 
no nukes, right? Um, and then it also did resupply and crew delivery to Skylab, which is the mission we're simulating here. So I don't know, maybe Skylab will make an appearance later on in this video, foreshadowing it. I don't know, maybe. Uh, who knows? But they're going to go ahead and separate the payload, and that is the Apollo thing. Totally never going to see that thing again in this video. Very epic foreshadowing. And welcome to the next the next payload the delta for heavy has made an appearance today as it is going to be launching the eft1 which was the orion test the uncrewed orion test uh yes this thing came in at 21 tons and is uh delta heavy is probably most unique payload i would say um so basically if you don't know what this mission is it was a test of the Orion, the Orion capsule, which is supposed to be for Artemis, take us to the moon and stuff, yay. Um, so yeah, it's a Delta IV Heavy with um, a launch escape tower on top of it, which is just kind of weird. Um, yeah, uh, so there you go, the side cores, uh, now it's burning the center core. The, um, the purpose of this mission was to, you know, just test the capsule, and they didn't want to do mainly re-entry testing, so the way this thing uh, works is after you get into parking orbit, it's actually going to go up to a very, a very high aft collapse, get a really elliptical orbit, so it's going to try and hit re-entry nice and, nice and hard there, so stage away B, uh, the core stage, and now it is the, uh, Delta upper stage, which is also the SLS upper stage, so it actually is quite similar to what the thing is, you know, and, and the Delta core stage is, is orange, too, so, and the Delta... Delta is really similar to SLS if you think about it, um, and it has two boosters. Yeah. Either way, um, yeah, very similar actually. I never even thought about that. That's weird. Either way, um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do a little orbit boosting, and then we'll do our, our re-entry. Then that'll be the mission. But uh, a few interesting tidbits about this 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 mission. Uh, one of the more so we don't know the exact weight. Obviously, 21 tons is an is an estimate. So it's pretty close. The real Orion weighs about 22 to 23 tons. So this is slightly lighter because uh, if you noticed um, before, this has been useful to talk about when the actual thing was on screen. But the uh, the service module uh, actually uh, was it was a dummy dummy stage. It wasn't real. It was just a, a manufacturing mock up or whatever. Um, so it did it actually wasn't the exact weight of the actual service module. So it's just a little bit lighter because you know engine and stuff so and it, and it actually didn't attack didn't detach from the delta upper stage um it was literally it, it was just it was completely dumb it did nothing it just sat there and but the orion um was it, it, did, it did detach and it does this normal thing and it's going to come in for a landing right about now as we very gracefully rolled down the hill good thing there is no crew on here this thing's almost supposed to land on the ocean but i uh planned my trajectory poorly uh so um well we can move on now and have a look at China! Yes, China! Everyone's favorite booster dropping, village exploding, genocide uh, country. What? Here we go. Welcome to the Long March 5B and the most recent launch of the, of, of the, of the launches we're going to be talking about today. This was the Tianhe core module for the Tiangong station that was launched just last month and was very famous when, uh, well, as of recording, um, and very famous for, you know, the uncontrolled booster landing, or the, uh, yeah. Uh, so that was fun. Uh, yes, this thing, the next three, um, payloads are all fairly close in weight. Uh, so this one was 22 and a half tons, and the Tianhe core module is very similar uh, to a Zvezda. They, they did China did buy the technology from the from the Rushkis. Um, this is a few modifications, which is why um, you know it, it's not a Zvezda. It's a Tianhe, guys. Um, so yeah, the, so Zvezda is also on this list, um, and that's the difference between the um, the Zvezda and the um, Tianhe is very low. But uh, this is a space shuttle, if you didn't notice, because space shuttle, so Tianhe is about uh, 200 kilograms uh, smaller than Zvezda, <laughs> and this is, this is actually kind of hilarious. This is the closest margin of any two. So the Tianhe module is 22,200, no, wow, I can't speak, it's, it's really late, guys, sorry, 22,500 kilograms, right? And the X-ray observatory is 22,750. So they're 200 kilograms apart. 200 kilograms apart. And I lied, actually. There's these... I can't speak, guys. Well, I'm really dying tonight. I start, like, quick tangent. It's 2 a.m., so... Tangent is done. I'm, like, falling asleep. You guys, like, my headphones... I've been wearing my headphones for, like, seven hours straight. And my ears are starting to, like, really hurt. Um, so probably should take those off for a minute. But, uh, yeah. We're getting into orbit. I, I misspoke. 
the uh, X-ray Observatory, which is what we're launching right now, uh, which is a really unique looking payload, which I, there's a very fun uh, detachment. We'll have to quickly have a look at here. Yeah, it's really weird. It's like this weird long thing, but it's a really cool payload. Um, and then we will uh, after we deploy it, we'll crossfade to our shuttle landing because shuttles land, don't they? So these these three payloads are really close. So the Tenka is 22 and a half tons. The Exer Observatory is 22753, and then the Zvezda, which is next on our list, to oh, host spoiler alert, uh, is 22776. So there's about 20 kilograms between uh, Exer Observatory and Zvezda, and about 200 between uh, Tenka and Zvezda. So they're very close. Uh, very, very, very close. But uh, this was the heaviest payload launched by a space shuttle and was launched on STS-93. And coming in for a very epic landing on the runway. Boink. Boink, boink, boink. We made it. Hey, everyone, welcome down. It's like Bob was alone in his play. Uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess shuttle's been approved for... Uh, but, yeah, Bob, Bob has been nice and, nice and lonely. But uh, as I said... Zvezda! Who's ready for some Zvezda? Zvezda was launched on a Proton with a nicely oversized fairing. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, okay, speed, size, scaling, right? You know, the, 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 the crew bar parts are pretty big compared to how big I made my Proton. So the point is, Proton launched Zvezda. And the convenient thing is, is Zvezda was the first ISS module. Um, which means if, you know, for me filming the video, I didn't have to, like, build all the other ISS modules and then, like, attach Vezda to it to, you know, like, simulate the actual mission. I, because Vezda's the first one, so there's no other modules have to, you know. So, uh, bottom stage has been depleted, now it's going to, uh, uh, yeah, getting called go back down and crash into the ocean. And now our second stage is going to fire a very big second stage on, uh, on Proton. Um, this was the heaviest payload launched by Proton, and our, our first uh, Russian mission of the of the video it'd be gonna be one more of these uh, i wonder where that could be um so there goes the second stage and now it's the third stage you can see our very epic zvezda zvezda it's cool to say first of all i like to say that name zvezda zvezda but it's also the first module of the iss as i said earlier which is very 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 cool the thing the one that started it all um and going to go ahead and get this thing circularized and then we will be getting ready to move on after that into the top three. Yo, we're getting to the top three. And in third place, we got a Saturn V with an Apollo. This is the second appearance of Apollo. And I was actually kind of debating what I would, how much I would weight this thing. Um, because this is the Apollo command and service module as well as the lunar lander launched on the Saturn V. This is the Apollo stuff, the stuff that landed on the moon. We, we know what this piece, you know what this stuff is, right? Very famous. Um, this thing weighed a combined 30 tons, uh, roughly. Um, but I, I did briefly debate, just to make it a level playing period, I was going to talk about low Earth orbit. So I was briefly, because so if you don't know the way the Saturn V works, uh, is you have obviously the bottom, uh, three stages, but the third stage only burns some of its fuel to get into into low Earth orbit, and then it burns the rest of its fuel to do its translunar injection to send the, the astronauts out to the moon. Uh, so, I briefly debated whether or not I wanted to include uh, the amount of fuel that the S4B, the third stage, what it's, uh, which the third stage is called the S4B, um, amount of fuel it had left over in LEO and count that as weight. Um, as payload, but then I decided not because that's not payload only the Apollo stuff is actual payload So that's gonna be what we're calling it even though this payload goes to the moon or to the moon to or to translunar injection And none of these other payloads. They're all Leo payloads or lower third payload. So yeah, Apollo 30 tons Very cool. I don't know. It really needs no introduction. Um, it is Apollo We all know what it is and I'm gonna do our translunar injection I'm not gonna do all Apollo mission because I've done like a bajillion Apollo missions on this thing I'm just gonna stop uh, when we, uh, once we, um, when, once the, once the Saturn V is all gone, so we're gonna do a little reorientation, and then look once the payload's fully detached from the Saturn V, so there it goes, and now we can move on back to Mother Russia, the superior Soviet Union, with the launch of the Buran Energia, the ripoff shuttle, yes, so, this thing. The shuttle, unlike in uh, America, NASA, the NASA shuttle, the Soviet shuttle, the Buran, actually counted as payload um, because the American shuttle had the, the, the orbiter, had the end, main engines on it, and you kind of needed it to get into orbit. Um, but in the Soviet Union, uh, the Energia, which was the launch vehicle, the big, you know, that looks like the space shuttle sack, basically, um, actually was its own independent rocket, and the main engines are on the bottom of, like, if you think of the orange tank. Um, 
yeah, so the Buran was its own payload, and it weighed uh, 62 tons. This is where the this is where the numbers start to get crazy. So this is over double the weight of Apollo. So yeah, the and that's without any payload, because um, it, it only launched empty. It had a theoretical payload capacity of around 30 tons. So if they would have launched something like that, um, this the, the 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 energy would have carried 90 tons to orbit, which is just crazy and a great little detachment there. But uh, uh, we can go ahead and quickly do our landing with Buran, and then it'll be able to move on to the number one place, which is very heavy, like holy crap. This is starting to get crazy. 60, that's a lot of weight. Oof. Wow, I can't even imagine. That's, GG to, the, to Mother Russia. Superior communism for getting that, to getting energy to work. Uh, GG to them. Um, and GG to me for this very epic landing as I start to spin out of control. So epic, and now I, I'm way too back heavy right now, so I have to like, get my little drain valve. Good thing I put a drain valve on. Or else it would have been some big trouble. Um, and now we can just kind of start to go forward. And now we can start our final entry. Uh, our final approach. Very steep approach. Uh, down to the KSC runway like so. And any second now. Nice and steep. And going to go ahead and drop the gear. And... Oh. 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 Uh, e touchdown! Hey, welcome, welcome back to the, to the ground, everybody. And now it is time, uh, in just a second, to move on to the biggest payload ever launched. So, coming in at 84 tons, the number one spot is Skylab. Skylab, Skylab, Skylab. So, Saturn V, the only rocket, I believe, in this uh, video to make a double appearance. Uh, is launching Skylab. So, if you don't know what Skylab is, Skylab is it is America's epic single launch space station. And that Saturn V looks a little weird, doesn't it? So, Skylab, this is really cool if you don't know. Um, Skylab is actually a, a basically a repurposed upper stage of the Saturn V, so, or an S4V. So, um, the Saturn V has, has, has three stages, as we talked about earlier, on the, uh, the Apollo bit. Um, the third stage, uh, if you're going to low Earth orbit, you don't really need the third stage. So they converted it into a space station, and they decided, hey, let's let's do that. Um, so the up the bottom two stages are going to deliver us all the way up into orbit, and then the third stage acted as a really cool space station. There's some cool videos of astronauts like like floating around, like you could do like flips, and it was really big because this the, the it's like an, it's a rocket stage. It's like it's like big. It was really big. They could like like jump around and bounce, and it was it was really there's a lot of room, a lot more room than uh, the ISS. Like they could fully stretch out and like not be able to reach any corner. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy. Um, but anyway, we pop the fairing open. There's that little front bit. Uh, my my Skylab isn't super great. Um, if check out like Game Preview UK has a pretty solid Skylab. Um, so oh, also by the way, guys, if you noticed in in in, in the video, some of the I don't know if it's just me, but some of the payloads looked a little blurry or something. Like, the, some of the, the graphics are a little blurry um, in, in some parts of the video. I don't think that was really uh, was really annoying, but you could... I don't know if you noticed, like, I, I obviously didn't, but I was trying to fix it intermittently through um, filming. So, <laughs> if you, like, look, some of the, ro some of the, part some of the rockets will be blurry, some won't. So, uh, that's the reason for that. I think it was a driver issue, but uh, there we go. And I adopted the, uh, the Apollo from the S... Uh, the Saturn one be on there, so that's going to be the end of that, and that's going to bring us to the end of the video. And since it is super super late, as I as I mentioned, I don't really I normally put a little picture of all the members, um, the join button right, and all the patrons as well. Um, but I think I'm just going to uh, just going to read them off this time because I don't really want to go through like the, the ten minutes it takes to uh, write them all down. So big thank you to Pleb Plays, Martin BLB guy from Doing a Space for Everyone, Hagen Sky Space Suit, CG in Space, Imagine Bot Hollows. How to be Hamster P, Novacon Games, Elni, Andrew Robinson, Comet Bricks, Leon, 21 CS, Tristan Spears, Pop the Dog, Only Just Tom, Pika Spin, Socket, DK Johnson, 96, Daniel Sander, Cranet, Snow Doggo, Green Curb, Alexium Official, The Chin Long, Leha, Spacey Poop, New Magic, The Swede, SpaceX, KSP, Vodge, Tax, Starship, uh, Raf James, David L, Dios, Chris Key, Space Clips, SN15, Deercraft, and Momad, and you. Uh, Krubes Kasser, 6969, UB Gaming, and Big. Double shout out to UB uh, Big and 6969 for being both on a 
on channel member and Patreon. And Patreon has Mitchvik, Seveno, Chandler, Suckwell, Light FN, Bogdan, Mitchvik, Turtsy, KSP, Reeds, Cool, Star, Gazer, Burb, Potato, Senior, I Love, Pile, and then of course, Sixth Dynasty, Giant, and Big. So that's going to be the video. So thank you for watching this next time. Please do a comment to this video. And again, thank you for watching this next time. And bye.